Right, I've done that about seven times now. That's uh, seven or eight times. I didn't put water on every time. Uh, sometimes I just broke up the surface and then uh, pressed it down again. One thing I've noticed, though, is the importance, though it sounds quite trivial, of little indentations and uh, dips in the surface of the sand as to how much water that area of sand gets. Um, and the other thing I've noticed is how much slower the water has now become at draining through the sand. It certainly reduced the drainage of the track even more. So I'm just going to pour some water on and you'll see two things. One is how slowly it now runs through the uh, sand. And the other is where those two little indentations were. They filled in so it's in now put water on. But you'll notice that as the water very gradually drains through that sand, um, obviously the peaks of the sand... Uh, disappear, uh, uh, um, appear above the waterline long before the uh, troughs in the sand do. And that means that more water is going to flow through the areas where there are little indentations in the sand. And that means that your distribution of water throughout the sand is going to become quite uneven. Um, and that in turn is going to make the sand behave differently in the areas that have more water flowing through it than the areas that have less water flowing through it. Uh, so it suggests that it's probably quite important if you want to get even water distribution in the sand to either smooth it out before putting the water on or uh, actually uh, break up the surface after you've put the water on uh, to spread the water more evenly through the sand. Um, as you can see now, the higher areas of sand are now clear of the water, whereas you've got puddles forming in the, in the lower areas of the sand there. And uh, consequently, you will get more water flowing through those areas. And as I say, I think over time on the track, that's going to get quite significant. So we just let the water drain through there. And we'll see now if the consistency of the sand and the consistency of the surface has changed uh, to any great extent, how hard the sand has become, really. Um, so we'll just let the water soak through there. Pretty well stopped dripping, so I'm going to do the famous yellow pencil test. And what we have now, I'm actually having to push quite hard on that, is quite a soft surface layer of sand. But the sand as you go deeper into the sample actually becomes very hard. I'm pressing really quite firmly now into that sand. So I think over time, unless you break up the deeper parts of the sand, you'll probably find that that's exactly what happens. And that is what happens on tracks very frequently. You get a soft, the surface layer of sand about an inch deep is quite soft. Uh, and then under that, there can be an underlying layer of um, very hard sand. Now, that goes down to only about that depth now before it gets rock hard. Let's just try that again. Obviously, the more pencil holes I put in, the softer the sun's going to get. Uh, again, only down to there. So the lower levels of this sand have now become rock hard and the drainage of the sand is progressively reduced. So this begs the obvious question. What happens if we make holes in the surface of the sand, if we aerate it in effect, uh, and then put water on. What difference does that make? I've no idea, but there's no better way to find out than actually trying it. So we put water on that now. We've got our little holes in the sand. Immediately we put the water on, the, the holes have basically disappeared from the top. Um, they will, of course, still be uh, channels through the sand underneath the surface of the water there. And um, so we'll see what happens. We'll uh, pause for a second while we let that water drain through and then uh, see you again in a second.